welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show with me, Martin Ashton, and... I'm Neil Donoghue. Uh, hi, Martin. How's it going? I'm very good. Neil, um, I know you're slightly uncomfortable with the uh, digital version of me, where I <laughs> lag in and lag out, because I'm not really in the shed, of course. So I'm not even going to pretend I'm there today for you. How's okay. that? Uh, <laughs> I, thought, I thought there was a funny smell in here, but it's not you, then. No. <laughs> no, it's not me. It's not me. <laughs> um, mate, how have you been? How's your riding been recently? Um, Are you I've... riding well? Um, average. I've been riding quite a lot recently, so I've been actually really enjoying that. Oh, until I rode with Blake, and you'll get to see a little bit of that very soon. <laughs> yeah. It was unusual riding. That actually was a lot oh. of fun saying that, but I don't that... like not being in control, should I say. Yeah, that looks very scary, and I'm looking forward to talking that in a little moment. Um, yeah. But, mate, I haven't had a show with you for a few weeks now, um, and yeah. not since the EWS news was out that we're now partners in EWS. EWS itself, yeah, um, and, and we are we are really really excited about that. But you being an EWS man, I wanted to get your thoughts on the season coming up because we're only weeks away from it starting, and, and yeah. as it gets closer, we're obviously going to start to focus in on it very deeply. But I wanted to try and get your view on it this far out. We're we're I mean with COVID, we're pretty sure when the race dates are, but things can change. But there's, there's time at this moment to think, what could we expect from the 2021 EWS season? Uh, because in, in cross country, it's just started and we've had some fresh faces on the podiums. Yeah. Um, Victor been... Koretsky taking his first win. Yeah, it's been very exciting to see any racing, uh, especially mm. the world's best people out there and seeing it really kicking off in that first round and obviously the second round will have happened. And yes. Tom will be yeah. filling in on the news, but the first round we had some great rides. Some, uh, Tom Pidcock as well came yeah. from the 11th grid. So <laughs> yeah. amazing talent there. We saw Lona Lecomte win. She won around last year, but Hayley Batten, young American rider, comes straight up from under 23s and yeah. onto a third place ride. Yeah, Amazing. yeah. so some fresh faces. Are we going to see anything similar on EWS? Is there anyone that you can think of that we should be keeping note of, that this could be their big year? And maybe someone who's not been on the on the radar to this point. You know, like obviously yeah, there's the know. Martin Mays of the world, but is there anyone new we should be looking for? I don't know. It's really hard. I think with Enduro, we've seen people like Sam Hill do so well. Obviously, last year he didn't ride at all. So, different season. We're looking at a mm. lot more racing this year. So, I kind of I look to those, I'm going to say steady, not steady, it's flat out, but you know what I mean. <laughs> a solid person who can win those races. Yeah. In the women's, I guess you're still looking at Isabo, but there's definitely hot competition in both. And we always see new riders coming up every year. Yeah. So, it's just exciting to see who that will be. Yeah. And, I'm, and from a selfish point of view, I can't wait to get to the races myself and start making some GMBM videos as well. And it's yeah. just exciting times, a bit more racing, you know, coming up. Yeah, I'm so excited about the EWS season. Um, I, I think I'm more excited about the EWS season than I've been about any mountain bike race season for a while. Um, I've got slightly sort of, I feel like this, the World Cup scenes, uh, I'm, I'm not, not so focused in on it. Um, and I really think there's some, I think, I tell you what, I'm willing to put my money on a rider this far out. Oh. Um, I, I, I think in the women's especially, because I think the women's EWS series is cool. Yeah. And I think there's some amazing riders in there, but I think this is gonna be the year we see Ella Connolly jump to the top. That's what I was I think. actually going to mention that. She, she's had a couple of great rides. She's had, yeah. uh, well, she dominated 2018 junior uh, and she has had two podiums so far. There was only mm. one race she did last year and she podium that third yeah. place. I'm actually going to see Ella next week, Martin. Going, I'm trying to <laughs> Scott and see her, hang out uh, and ride with her. So yeah, I'd be excited. I think, you know, it's a very exciting time of year because people are training hard. The race season is coming quick and I think they'll be kind of nervous. You're going in straight into a double header round. <laughs> as well so yeah you go from nothing to everything in one go so we'll you know i think sparks will fly yeah it's going to be great my money's on ella um and she's riding a really nice bike i heard anyway i won't go on about that um so ews stuff to come in it's, it's exciting i tell you what else i wanted to talk to you about this week is some hacks and some bodges because of the experience you mentioned um, <laughs> yes. at the top of the show we're getting yeah. to that um exciting stuff now last week on the show when you were with blake you, you brought my attention, because uh, I watched it um, a few days later, to this amazing hack from Chris. I just thought this hack was 
incredible. It's, they look seriously like it must be precise to make yeah. that work. Those bits have got to sit perfectly there, and it's, it's well made, isn't I, I it? Think, I think it's so great. So basically, he's, he's built a, a bottom bracket in extractor out of this. Um, how yeah, he, how he came up with the idea, it's brilliant. Yeah. Using, basically, using a chain whip to take off your bottom bracket. Um, yeah. And it just got me thinking how amazing Hacks and Bodges because you look at that <laughs> picture and you just think, well, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Until yeah. you look at it twice and work out what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and Chris has seen past the the look of the moment, but made a brilliant solution. Uh, and it got me thinking to some great hacks and bodges we've had over the years. And I've got some great hacks to show you for this week in a moment. But Can't you've wait. been experiencing a hack of GMBN standards, maybe the greatest GMBN hack ever. It could well be. I mean, I really, yeah. I'm not sure how much we're teasing this because the video's coming this weekend. Let's show but a little bit. Let's, let's tease show them with a little bit. Like, look at this amazing contraption hacked together by none other than Bingers himself. So he has um, been, yeah, Blake has been building and this is, I think, <laughs> the best build person he's ever made. Because you look at it, I remember, he, you know, he got out of the van I was like, wow, that's amazing. Who's going to yeah. ride it? Oh, no, you're going to ride it, Neil. Oh, you are, Neil. Like, you are. Okay. I mean, what was it like? Give us a little idea, because this video on this, this amazing contraption is coming out uh, at the end of this week, so you've got to stay tuned on GMBN this week to see this. Um, it's, it's nuts. Um, but what was it like? Give us a little idea of what it was like to stand on yeah. the side of that thing. Um, it was actually really, really good fun. And <laughs> lucky that I trust Blake so much. You know, he's a great rider, so I'm always like, like riding the tandem with you, Mark. You're a great rider as well, but I, I'm not that good at not being in control. No, when that's I what I thought. On that, I was kind of, the good thing about that is you can jump off it. So I didn't yeah. need to, but I felt like I could jump off it. Yeah. And actually, yeah. it, we started going bigger and bigger, and I was we were both into it, both go along <laughs> with it, and we started doing some pretty big jumps. And what I will say is, the bike lasted, but it wasn't in quite as good condition when we'd finished with oh, it. Oh, interesting, interesting. I can't wait to see this video. It's so cool. And what I thought was amazing is, is it, it's the opposite to Chris's bottom bracket extraction, okay? So Chris's bottom back bracket extraction is ugly, but it solves yeah. an amazing problem beautifully. Yes. <laughs> Whereas Blake's uh, hack, right, it looks incredible. It looks amazing. It looks like an inco a cool thing. And then as you say, maybe it doesn't necessarily solve the situation beautifully for the, the entire period of time. Maybe it goes downhill. Pardon the pun. Just a little. But, yeah, yeah, but it's great. It is great. That video is coming up on GMBN later this week, so don't miss out. Yeah. Um, it's a really great, <laughs> it's a great looking thing. But we're on the subject of hacks and bodges, Neil. So why don't we go straight Boom. into this week's hacks and bodges. Um, this, this first one, you're gonna be purely just disgusted by. Have a look at that image. Can you see what's strange about it? Oh, well, um, I can see gaffer tape and around the handlebar. Look at that. Just look at the handlebars for a moment. It's quite, yeah, it's a bit, that left-hand grip looks slightly wonky mine <laughs> yeah well well actually if you look at these other images in the next slide what, what's oh, actually yeah. happened is the bar has snapped off okay and oh. our man richard on his trek slash has not yeah. wanted his his ews race to finish he wants to get to the end because he's in a competition so he's managed to keep the lever on the handlebars and then <laughs> he's used the lock on only of the grip to go on the end and then made the rest of a handlebar out of Allen keys. Wow. And rode the rest of the EWS race basically with a, 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 a well, he's used the uh, lock on of the grip to hold his hand on the bike. That's all that's holding him there. That There's no mad. handlebar under that grip. That it's just is... Allen key. <laughs> well, I mean, that's one hell of a bodge, but I mean, but I don't Isn't I'm... that nuts? I really don't know what to say about that, but yes, that is a pretty crazy. But well I've done. never, I've Making never seen, I've never seen anything that nuts. No, <laughs> it's pretty wild. <laughs> um, well done, Richard. Um, this next one is a much more beautiful solution. Um, I think this is fantastic. This is from ah. Brent, and uh, basically he wanted to try disc brakes, so yeah. uh, he he created a disc brake mount. 
Yeah. Um, out of just one piece of uh, aluminium, and uh, it is, is it aluminium? It doesn't say what metal it is, but it does look like it's a piece of yeah, I'd say so. Valley. Um, and it's great. I mean, not an easy thing to get right, but I guess it, you can shim it so that you can get the uh, the, the exact yeah. distance from the disc. But it's a that is a great solution. Turning a a normal V-brake bike into a disc brake bike, just like that. Two bolts, yeah. basically. Two bolts. Good hack, I'd say. Very good hack. So we've gone from very bodge to very hack. Now we're back to literally bum bodge. Look <laughs> at this. Yeah, wow. Jeffrey out on the trail, his seat's broken off. It happens from time to time. Um, yeah. And well, he didn't want his ride to finish. Looks like, look, we've even got a little bit of video of him riding along and he looks, it looks okay. I mean, <laughs> it looks like it works. You just can't stand up because it'll fall off and then you don't want to sit down. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't trust it. That's what I'd be thinking. I'd thinking, yeah. what, I've got all my weight on this now. I'm starting to trust it. But what if it snapped? <laughs> you know, we're talking oh, like no. it snaps. Bugs, bugs part. Oh, I mean, yeah. There's some danger there. There's some danger. Mm. Yeah, but well done for sort of salvaging the ride. Literally, using oh, a lot. What was your favourite one out of those three, Neil? Give us, give us your favourite, and we are going to send a GMBN race top. Um, and there are rumours of a brand new GMBN race top. Not Ooh. saying anything. I'm not yeah. looking at one just off screen right now or anything. I think we've got to go with Richard on that track slash for bodging his handlebars back together to make sure it doesn't get DNF because that is Amazing. genius. Amazing. Really. Amazing. Yeah. I didn't think you were going to go for that one. I didn't think you were going to go for that one because I thought you'd be offended by it slightly. <laughs> But, uh, great, well done, well done. Um, fantastic hack and bodge. If you have got a hack or a bodge you've done um, back at home, you've got something in your man cave that you'd like to show us, uh, or lady cave. Oh, that sounds weird. <laughs> You get what I mean. <laughs> if you've got anything you'd like to send us, make sure you send it over to GMBN Uploader. Uh, right now, it's time for the news. Let's see what Tom's got to say. What's up, everyone? I've got a few pretty chunky bits of news for you this week, starting with round two of the XC World Cup from Novier Mesto in the Czech Republic. Jana Bellamoina unfortunately didn't compete this week since being diagnosed with kidney stones, so healing vibes to her, and we hope she's back soon. In the women's short track, victory went to Hayley Batten in a brilliant ride, beating Loana Lecomte by 16 seconds. Jenny Risvez took third, just ahead of Annie Last, who certainly found form for the short track event. Pauline ferrand Pavot had a nasty crash, taking a saddle to the stomach and a course marker to the face, so headed to hospital for a checkup, fortunately getting the all clear to race on Sunday. The men's short track race was decided in a head-to-head -head sprint by Matthew van der Poel just holding off Tom Pidcock, who reportedly couldn't get into his highest gear. On to the main event now, and there's nothing like almost three days of consistent rain to add some serious challenges to a familiar track. In the women's race, it was business as usual for Loana Lecomte, out front on her own with a huge margin for a lot of the race. It was Rebecca McConnell chasing initially, but on the penultimate lap, Hayley Batten stormed past on the never-ending climb, clinching the second spot, one better than last week. Batten finished 1 minute 39 behind Lecomte, but was able to put a further 12 seconds between her and McConnell in third. After her short track disaster, Pauline ferrand pivot would have been happy with fourth and valuable points towards the overall, and it was Evie Richards rounding out the podium in fifth. In the men's race, it was Pidcock and Van der Poel from the get-go, but an attack from Pidcock on lap three saw him take a 30-second lead, which he gradually extended to the biggest winning margin a men's race at Novier Mesto has ever seen of a whole minute. Remember, it's only his second Elite XE race too. Get Tom Pidcock a ticket to Tokyo for the Olympics ASAP, because there is serious gold medal potential there. Matthias Fluckiger made his way past MVDP at one point, but couldn't make the move stick, finishing in third, with Andre Sink finishing fourth and Jordan Saru rounding out the top five. We also had a spot of downhill racing across Europe, with Miriam Nicole and Armory Piron taking wins at the Botticast round of the Portugal Cup, and Loris Vergier and Valley Hall taking wins at the Coppa Italia round in Salosta. All right, breaking news for you now. YT have just released the new Capra, an update to their long travel enduro bike. And yes, it can fit a water bottle. They've tweaked the design and changed the seat stay brace to be asymmetric, opening up a bunch of space underneath that shock. Now the update has been in the forum room mill for a little while now since a fake RV advert with the goat man from the first Capra launch video was posted by several YT athletes. Well, now the goat has returned. 
Another crazy psycho thriller style movie to promote this bike. There's a link in the description to the full thing. Go watch it after you finish the Dirt Shed Show if you've not already seen it. Onto the bike itself, which is available in two versions, the 29er and the MX, which has a 650B wheel out the back. The new Capra in 29 offers 165mm of travel through the frame, with the MX a touch more at 170, both to match a 170mm fork up front. Both frames were designed independently, so they haven't just slapped a smaller wheel in the same frame and compromised by changing the linkage. The new bikes also have a steeper seat angle, slacker head angle and longer reach than the previous generation as you would expect to keep up with modern trends. There are currently three variations available to pre-order, all carbon fibre. The core 3 and 4 builds and a limited launch edition. There are 100 of these launch edition bikes available in medium through to XXL in the MX wheel size only. They come in this rad soft pink with plenty of paintwork that references the Return of the Goat film. Right, a quick bit of good news relatively close to home to finish up. Ride Sheffield have been selected by the Santa Cruz Pay Dirt Fund to receive a million dollar grant over three years to help plan new projects, maintain existing trails and improve access and development in the area. Right, we are off for a walk with Toff now for the sickest thing of the week. I'll see you in a bit. Cheers Tom, hey everybody. Right, so this week's sickest thing is Andrea LeCondigy's new video, Apart From Fox. It's part of their new Unplug series and it's super sick. So this video provides a really good insight into Andrea's local riding spots in Spain. And I don't know about you, but I think they're pretty much exactly like I thought they were gonna be. Just super huge motor jumps, so rad. The first spot is described as a super ultra secret riding spot. And the reason for that is because in Spain, they don't really get that much loam and they basically don't want other riders just going there filming the crazy loam spots. And this spot looks unreal. Now the second spot is described as a not quite so ultra secret riding spot. So it's still pretty secret and that's his moto compound. Now, if you're into moto, this looks amazing. Just great jumps everywhere. And Andrea's got a really good whip, like so sideways. So the third and final stops at his house. And this place looks amazing. It's basically what every mountain biker wants, right? A place where you can just build whatever you wanted. And I'd say it's super deserved. I mean, he's been a pro for a really long time and he did a lot for the scene back in the day. And like, he really inspired the sort of, this whole moto sort of side of things and prevented it from just getting a bit too sort of bmx -y. But yeah, I think it's a really good insight into sort of the way he rides and his riding. And yeah, definitely worth checking out. Right, so that's my sickest thing this week. Andrea LeCondigy's new unplugged edit from Fox. Right, time to go back to the dirt shed. Thank you, Toff. Thank you, Tom. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Neil, have you got any of these GMBN shorts? Um, I've not worn any yet, but I've seen you in them. I'm sure I have. I have. I like, I've not worn them this year, but good timing. Actually, they're back in stock in the shop and it is almost short season. So why not head over there, help support the channel and get yourself a sweet pair of riding shorts at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, these, uh, these do look cool. And like you say, it's getting into short riding season, which is great mm. stuff. Um, talking about riding season, we mentioned EWS. Um, I don't want to miss my opportunity to drop in with Rick McLaughlin from EWS just to get a little bit of an update. So, Neil, will you just bear with us while we just see what Rick's got to say? Let's do it. Hello Dirt Shed Show and welcome to your weekly dose of everything Enduro World Series and AWS E from myself. Now as I record this, we are just over a month away from racing getting underway at the Met EWS Val di Fassa Trentino. And what that means is our particular little corner of the internet is beginning to look just a little bit more serious as the teams begin to emerge from the long off season and sniff the air of a fresh new year of racing ahead. We've got big rumour this week that GT Factory Racing are going to be in Italy on a new race bike. Rocky Mountain Race Face have just released a video of them testing extensively with Fox Racing Shocks. Well worth looking out that one. And Canyon Collective's Jack Moyer has put out a video of him not only being unbelievable on a bicycle, but being unbelievable on a surfboard as well. In terms of the UK front, we are also looking ahead to the biggest race of the year so far. That is going to be an EWS qualifier at the end of the month, and it looks like the epic Hope PMBA Enduro down in Graveway is really going to be something special. Five stages of racing, all on private land in the Lake District and supported by a local brewery, so what's not to love about that? Some big names already on the sign-up sheet for that one. Greg Callahan, Keelan Grant, Katie Winton, the Gowan girls, Joe Barnes, 
It's going to be tight, tight racing. Also going to be down there is Polly Henderson, who was the fastest woman at that race last year. And someone, a former Trophy of Nations uh, gold medal winner and someone that a lot of people are tipping to do really, really well this season. So it'll be our first chance to see how her off season has paid off as well. Look, it's early doors yet, but it just feels fantastic to be talking to you guys about bike racing again. I'll report back on that in a couple of weeks' time. Caption contest time. Neil, oh. you were in charge of the Dirt Shed show last week, and what did you forget to do? I don't think we did. I saw that it wasn't in there, but I'm sure we did it. Although, <laughs> now you say it. No, there was no photoed put forward for the caption contest last week when oh. you and Blake Sampson are in charge. I saw so, the comments, yes. Oh. Um, a slap on the wrist for you, mate. Uh, I would never do something like that. But here is the photo for this week's caption contest. Right. Um, take a look at that. Now, give us your captions for that. Get involved in the comment section down below. It's your chance to win a GMBM mug. Uh, Neil, have you got the GMBM mug that we could possibly show while you're on oh, the set there? I've got a mug. Could, I've got, I've could got we more just mugs. demonstrate the mug? Well, there's one mug. Look, look, at, one. look at that. This look is, that. is my personal favourite at home, the one that I use all the time. It's got that sort of cool... Yeah, pass, pass me that mug, Neil. Just pass that to me. Ah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, GMBM mug time. Give us your caption for that photo and uh, you could be uh, winning yourself a mug next week I really hope and wish you good luck uh, Neil we've got a fantastic week coming up on the channel uh, I'm gonna put these teasers out right now look at this stuff we've got coming up some amazing videos Martin, we're giving out more stuff now. We're giving out a super nice t-shirt to go with the super nicest bike in the bike vault this week. And oh. I've seen a bit of a preview. There are some super nice bikes in there, so. There are. Let's there get are. in We've there. We've got some great ones. Here we are in. We are in, Neil, with Carl's Norco yeah. Fluid. I really like this one, right? Because one, it's my favorite colorway. I don't know if anyone's seen my wheelchair or my bikes. They tend to yeah. have a bit of black and orange. I like to go with that. Got the Hope um, Orange grips. Yeah. Oh, no, Ergon grips, sorry, but the uh, brakes stem. That's probably not a Hope stem, actually. It doesn't yeah. quite match, but very cool. No, the stem's not, the stem's not, but that is literally my setup. Orange Hope with orange Ergon grips on my bowhead. That's what I've gone with. Good choice, Carl. Uh, for me, it's a definite super nice. Dawn, super nice. That's a Norco Fluid FS3. Do you know? That, do you know that bike at all, Neil? Do you no, know I that don't bike? Know. Talking about yeah. Norcos in the bike vault last week, saying how good yeah, they look yeah. nowadays. Yeah, I don't, no, yeah, I don't. They're looking actually. very nice. Like you say, it's a much cleaner look than they used to have. Much, much smoother. Check out the next bike. This is an NS Bikes Fuzz 2019 downhill bike outside oh. the Stratford Velodrome in London. Uh, who, this is jo uh, Gregor's bike, should I say, who takes it to Aston Hill. Yeah, Bombs and it's a beauty. Ones. It's a beauty. It, it looks it looks very uh, slick. It's well maintained. Looks great, those Michelins it on there. It does cool. look shiny, you know, some shiny tyres yeah. now. I like the way the tyre graphic matches the rim graphic. Yeah, can't, man, can't beat that. Um, it, it's got to be a super nice, just I for think, pure yeah. setup. It's just a Black and yellow, looking good. The colourway, I don't know what it I don't know what it is about that bike, but it reminds me slightly of the Sam Hill uh 
it's the tyres, does it? For EWS me? bike, those probably is the yeah. tyres that do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's sort of synonymous with those at the moment. Yeah. Um, next up, we've got Aiden's 2021 YT Capra, all in Neil yeah. Donahue stealth. New bike. Uh, Aiden yeah. says, brand new bike. Uh, my prize YT Capra that took me a year to save for by working at my LBS. Nice. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I tell you what, it's a blooming nice looking bike. I love the little touch of purple on there yeah a little bit a uh, little bit batman joker-esque that one well like done that. aiden for working yeah. hard and saving your Very cash nice. always feels sweet doesn't it when you buy yourself something like that yeah, it certainly does neil what are you going to give it it's nice oh <laughs> it's nice <laughs> wow that was no it is, it is really nice it's nice. <laughs> he's not going more, Aiden. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I thought he was going, but he didn't. Um, okay, our next one is from Don. This is a Gorilla Gravity Smash in, yeah. Sedo in Sedona in Arizona. Uh, now, Neil, am I imagining this right? But does this does this look a little bit like this bike looks a little bit like sort of maybe something that's coming out from Cannondale in the future a little bit? I don't know. Am I imagining that? I don't think you're imagining it. That is, I don't know, really don't know much about <laughs> Gorilla Gravity, but they're based in BC, I guess, because I see um, Joe Borelli doing, he's riding yeah. from now, and I see him like swapping the back end. He's got his like enduro bike, and he swapped the back end out, and it turns it into like a short travel XC rig, which is really yeah, interesting. Right. I've never seen that before. That's got a coil on that bike. Gorilla Gravity Smash. Yeah, interesting. You've got the bottle cage up on the top tube, and then like a. Yeah, yeah. Tool yeah. It's down just there. something about that really horizontal um, rear shock that. Mm feels like i don't know where have i seen that have i seen that on a new bike coming out is that a link i don't know no i'm not sure mine it's different to one I've but yeah i, I mm. actually think that's super nice i think it's a very interesting bike so Whoa, I'm gonna... super nice isn't it super nice Wow, I was not expecting, you've really surprised me today, Neil. The YT didn't get it, the Gorilla Gravity Smash that doesn't look like anything I've ever thought of. That, you know, well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be interesting to see what you do with this. David's 2021 Trek Roscoe 7, love it, I love, love this. A lot of people with 2021 yeah. bikes. So people are buying it. People are, yeah, are finding yeah. it hard to come by, but I guess a lot of yeah. people are born, that's why. Yeah, nice. no, I really love this because uh, nine weeks ago today, when uh, David sent this in, he'd had a massive heart attack at 43 years old. Whoa. Um, and while he was in the rehabilitation clinic, he ordered this bike. Nice. That uh, is he cool. Used, he used to do BMX. He's back out mountain biking. He's obviously got a few skills. He's loving it. He's feeling much better. Great. Fantastic. Good that's, story and great bike for it, for getting back out in the woods. That's and... mountain biking for you. You yeah. know what that is, Neil? What? Flipping super nice. nice. That's what that is. <laughs> it's nice. Well done, David. Well right. done. Love it. Um, is your bike, you people at home, is your bike super nice? You think it is. You do think it is. It's yours. You love it. But will we think it's super nice? The only way you can find that out is if you send it in to us on the GMBN uploader. It's on the screen right there. That's where you send your hacks and bodges, your fails, your sends. And all of your bike faults um, we want to see them please send them in get involved with the show it's nothing without you guys um, so we look forward to seeing your bikes Neil who are you going to give the super nice t-shirt to this oh, week I'd almost forgotten about that mine um, yeah we usually do <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the Daniel bike Gregor's uh, NS bikes fast but what do you reckon oh it's between for me it's between no Gregor's I like that one yeah yeah that was nice interesting bike it made me think it made me, hmm. took, took me around the world of bikes a little bit so yeah oh, good I choice Gregor you have got a super nice t-shirt you are the super nice of the week well done um Ooh. we've seen lots of bikes we've not been seeing them riding so let's take a look at your fails and sends just before the end of the show
Martin, I've got to go. Sorry, the show's over. I've got to go and pack my bags, get my bike ready. I'm going to Scotland and I'm very excited wow. about it. So, yeah. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Um, the boys are all going up to do a bit of a shoot, uh, hang out with Ella Connolly and do some other very cool stuff. So some big vids coming. Thanks for watching the Dirt Shed show this week. I uh, really enjoyed having you all. Um, we'll see you the same time next week, but don't miss out on some brilliant videos from GMBN in the coming days. Uh, until then, we'll see you next time. See ya.